I'm Ike of Ike Comics, and this is Draw Process. I draw a comic book page and process about my mindset, development, and techniques. Here we go. This was the first version of the thumbnails. I thought I needed Sun's face, but I actually put Sun on the last page, a shot of him. So I was able to go straight to uh, King Croc grabbing him right out of the boat. Um, and then I moved the other panels around. I actually cut them out and glued them on the page to get um, to not have to redraw them, but get them where I wanted them. So there it is. And that's what I'm going off of. Okay. I have been uh, getting myself in more in my in myself. <laughs> that's a funny way of putting it. Um, I haven't been like allowing myself to be super busy and multitasking, listening to a podcast while I'm doing dishes and whatever. I'm just trying to be present. Um, and this goes back to being the practice of my art, that there's also an art to being myself, being Ike, and I need to practice that too, like the, the art of just being me. Um, so I feel like I'm getting myself and my mind, my emotions in the right place so that I can be much more present. And by doing that, I believe I will be much more effective, but I don't even effective at what, I don't know, just at being me, at sharing and communicating and listening better. It's interesting, yeah. Uh, there's a way that I listen to podcasts and can even work on my drawing skill or just like work harder on art um, that comes from a place of lack, feeling like I'm lacking and I'm driven to make up for what I lack, um, to, to, through hard work, push back against that block in my path. Um, but this, um, space I'm in now, I, there's no lack. I am the artist I need to be. My body has all the wisdom it needs, uh, and uh, I'm not, it's not egotistical. It's not like saying I'm so great that I don't need to learn anymore and I don't lack. It is that I have everything I need to, to do it, like to, to be the practice and keep getting better. Um, I just have to do it. I just have to do it every day. My kids are watching Lock and Key, and you can go into another person's mind, and everyone's mind is like a unique reflection of their personality, their interests, whatever. It's really silly, but, um, yeah, like, what does it look like in my mind? I think there's little bits of what what I could be, you know, that it's possible there, but a lot of change I have to go through here, and it, it really just relates back to this way of being. Yeah, they're actually watching that show right now, so hopefully you can't hear it in the background from the other room. Here I'm, uh, yeah, working out how to position King Croc, uh, sun in his mouth, exactly how big is sun in comparison? Um, what position to put these canoes in, or the, the joined canoes with the two men on it? Like, um, yeah, all that stuff. I'm trying to, trying to get a good angle for all that. Um, 
a nice wide shot because uh, it's the last we're going to see. Uh, like you, you don't even get a full reveal of King Croc until we have to face him in his, you know, in his full power and, and scariness. So, um, yeah, what well, I've got my phone there and I'm looking at the thumbnails. I might also look at previous pages to see, okay, like I know there's this big wall here. There's a few houses there. Um, remind myself of how uh, the fabric house with the weaver's place looks, um, where the he, where the, the guards, the soldiers, where they're laying on the raft. I'm going to have to do that later. And uh, yeah, here in this panel with sword, um, just erased the whole thing. Like I had the thumbnail and he's in a certain pose in that. And I thought, no, I'm going to, I'm going to change that up. I'm going to have him like looking over his shoulder, looking back because he was facing the other way. Um, but then I wasn't happy with that. So some, some of my work here is a struggle to draw the expression. So it, it is a more extreme expression to, to capture. And I don't want it to be a caricature. I don't want it to be funny. Uh, and I don't want it to be too scared or whatever. So you're trying to get the right expression for the character, the right acting out of them. Um, but it's also more challenging to draw because I don't usually draw people with these expressions. Uh, and then there's the pose. It's like, to, you know, he was looking over his shoulder. No, let's have him completely turned and facing. Should the sword be over his shoulder? Like, or is it up in front of him here? So uh, took me some work to work that out. And I actually just left it and walked away. So I just erased that panel and I decided I'm just going to come back to this. I'm not, I'm not feeling like very in the flow here and, um, I don't want to get too bogged down in these details. So let's just keep moving and I go back to it later and, and eventually I get something I'm pretty happy with. Perhaps in this moment, I may, I'm not sure, but I may have had a picture of a crocodile on my phone. Um, but the, the angle of the photos do not any, any, you know, Google search, just a quick search. The angles I'm getting on a crocodile or its skull are not exactly what I need. So just doing that quick reference allows me to get just a sense of the, of the three dimensional shapes involved. Um, so this kind of like skull plate behind the eyes, like the shape of that. Uh, and then the, where the jaws are in relation, like I just get a sense of those things, uh, with a quick reference. Um, now I have a sketchbook with some croc drawings. Um, but it's actually harder for me to find those references than to just sometimes just do a quick, uh, image search. Because I know that I don't need a specific drawing. I just need something real quick. Um, and uh, yeah, throwing shadow on him here. Um, some black spots to, to show the form and bring him into the foreground to create like stronger contrast on him. So he really stands out from the background. Um, Yeah. And uh, I, at first I was having King Croc's arm coming up into the view, but I decided not to show it yet because I haven't exactly designed how I want his body to look. Uh, at f The first design I, I had in my sketchbook was pretty cartoony, um, like almost kind of like comical. Uh, imagine this kind of beer bellied like crocodile from like, um, like Baloo from the jungle book or something like, um, and it was fun. I thought I might go with that, but, uh, I decided to go with like just a giant, like almost precisely a crocodile, but he's going to need, um, the more, uh, human like arms and to stand on his hind legs in a more human shape. So, I know I've got to do a few adjustments to the anatomy, um, 
but I didn't want to have to figure it out right now just to throw that arm up there. Um, and I do that a lot, honestly, where I draw something on the page and then, uh, that's my design. So I just reference that page in the future for, for the next drawings I do of that, of that character or something. Um, or at least the final design ends up just being, <laughs> maybe I've got some preliminaries, but then, uh, just whatever I decide to put on the page that when it's finally time to, to decide. Okay. Um, I was, I was reflecting on some of the things that I have been saying on this channel and, and I thought, uh, it might be worth clarifying some things. Um, I think that I come across as a, a real encouraging voice um, and someone who has sort of a like a, a message that, of, of finding some uh, humility but like um, confidence and peace and just like um, give up the striving and the fight and uh, has a, yeah some kind of like th that I would have a negative opinion of of fighting hard for things um, and uh, not being kind of in, in a real confident, thriving kind of place. Uh, and um, I don't think that's, you know, very, that's not really fair. And I thought I might as well clarify some of that, that like uh, there are times when I have done that, striv strived for a, uh, a challenge like um to to try to attain to to the the goal um to work yeah to to work hard and um like and and i guess yeah to clarify like a a different kind of working hard it's not just like like a zen master that you know works hard in that way but like uh you know some kind of crossfit mma aggressive type right like almost these two different examples of hard work. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've, I've been both and I, and I don't really have a problem with, with that. I think, uh, it has its place. Uh, and if the, and, and I think it's more important that like, uh, like if that's where you are, if what you feel is, uh, this drive, uh, to stand up, uh, you to, you know, to oppose and to aggressively work, for what you want like if if that's where you're at um probably better to to go with that to a degree like to just to be aware and express like what's what you're really feeling there and where you're at in your journey and that's why I'm saying this is um uh many people are not in their journey where I am in mine. And I don't want it to sound like I'm preaching like this is where you should be because you should be exactly where you are. And that what you might need to do is, you know, what might look different than what I'm finding myself needing to do, whether that comes to the actual way I'm practicing and, and working on this or, um, or just the way my mindset, my, my, uh, mood and kind of just nature of, uh, of it. So, um, yeah, there's a place for, for it, especially if that's what you're feeling, then to, to maybe, uh, be honest with that and, and express that. Um, And I think that would lead to a healthier place, uh, to be honest with it, uh, and, and let it be. Yeah. I mean, if, uh, you know, like there's, there's artists that aren't comfortable sharing their work, uh, publicly and, uh, in the community I'm in, and I know there's, there's some people that, that are uncomfortable sharing it publicly. And, uh, some of the advice is, um, well, you know, like, 
you're better, you know, you're, you're better than you think you are. You need to be more confident. Don't worry what people think. Just, just start posting more. Um, that might be what the person needs to hear. That might be that next step for them is to just overcome fear and start doing it. But, um, that isn't necessarily the next step for that person that, um, if they're not comfortable sharing it yet, that it's actually okay. Like what else is going on in you? If you are, um, yeah, yeah. Like, is there more to, to this? Is, is it that you, uh, f- feel like you are still a student, like that you're really trying to strive towards something and you want to work it out inside yourself and not share it with others. And, and that by working it out inside yourself, you can like have this fire that you're fueling that like keeps you going. But as soon as you start sharing it with others that, you know, criticism comes in or whatever, and then, and and you know, that would be harmful to you, uh, to what you're doing, like what your practice needs to be right now. That's totally valid. Um, if, if that's, you know, if that's you, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say there. Uh, yeah, being the practice of your art. I guess I would, yeah, just to kind of sum that up. It's not to imagine what the ideal is and start being the ideal. Like, just, like, insist on being that. Like, uh, I think it is to embrace where you are at right now and what is right for you right now. And that if you be that then you will evolve like that's through that that's where the change will come is by leaning in engaging in where you are at right now and then you'll evolve um and 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 it'll look like something else later and and mine will look like something else later too there may come a point where uh, i get much more um uh, just some other sort of, of style i might get more uh internalizing and working it out for myself before I share things, which, you know, I'm trying to do the opposite of that right now, but someday I might start doing that. I might need to, uh, become more, uh, critical of my work and like hard work type discipline focused on certain aspects. Um, I might need to not draw freely on the page and scribble and just find what I like, but to, I might need to like force myself to follow a, a real disciplined model for how the page might look. I might need to um, scan in the pencils and then ink later. I might need to use a different tool for it. And like, uh, what I mean by that is like, go against my inclinations, go against what feels like free flowing, those things that are like, seem like positive traits that I have right now. I might have to go against at some point uh, and deny myself that, uh, that thriving and freedom that I get to enjoy right now that, that might look, might look, uh, desirable to you. Uh, so, um, yeah. Um, I, I think, yeah, I guess I hope that the, the main thing that I get to do here is not show people how exactly to make comics or to think about and be themselves, but, to show them an example of how it can be done and, um, and, uh, a sort of a mindset and a way of thinking about this, that that is much more inclusive. That's, uh, embracing what, you know, diversity and what, whatever, um, is unique to that person. And uh, working out this face here, obviously, um, not uh, not something I have a lot of practice with. My faces are usually not as expressive, right? Um, trying to get, you know, like, what's in shadow? What do I need to show? Like, the teeth, the lip, you know, especially because the way I've chosen to draw him, like, his beard is, like, solid black, basically. So, uh, 
how to to separate his his mustache and beard from uh, the shadows uh, in his mouth. For uh, it's you know it gets a little interesting there. All right. Um, uh, let's see here. I've had to draw this same building from a similar angle here several times. Hmm. Going by feel as much as possible. I know that I'm not I'm not referencing precisely. I just knew there were a couple buildings there and they felt you know, about, about that size and so on. That the, that the little windows in the wall felt about that distant from each other. Um, man, being able to, to let the work be a little loose and go by feel is so helpful that I don't have to have such precision. That would dull that would just be boring uh, here I am um, I started putting lines for the the ripples in the in the water but they're so close to the gutter or the I don't know what page is this uh, 28 so this would be a left-handed page so it's really close to where they're gonna get like cut off and it's unnecessary to be there. So I'm going to go back later. You'll see and erase all of that. All those ripples that are really close to the left hand side of the, of the page. Um, I'm learning to not put details where I don't want your attention to go anyways. I'm getting better about that these days. Um, For me, uh, building my website and starting this YouTube has been so good for me. Um, like the way that I'm more focused on working in the sketchbook, uh, drawing every day, getting more present, like I was talking about earlier, um, and getting healthier, like, and, and not, not in, in my body too, but in my mind, um, that, uh, a lot of this is fueled by this, this, uh, challenge, this activity, this engagement of, of doing this channel. And, and I know that I'm going to do more that, uh, I'm going to be doing even more, uh, posting and, and sharing thoughts and who knows what else. And um, I'm going to be, you know, rising to that challenge and it, it gives me a reason. It gives me a reason to to stay more uh, focused and healthy and uh, clear-headed and present uh, and more, more disciplined in the work. Um, so even if this is uh, just screaming into the void by having a YouTube, wow, is it helpful. Um, even if you're not ready or interested in doing a YouTube or an Instagram or something like, um, I'm going to say a few things here. Uh, could you do something like this for yourself? Like, could you just have a journal or something where you track your own progress day by day, a calendar where you're tracking your work, where, uh, a journal where you write down your thoughts for the day, for the week. Build a, a, a log and a reflection of your practice for yourself. It doesn't even, it doesn't even have to be on YouTube and it could also be effective. At, at getting some the same results of what I'm experiencing. Um, also, if you are an artist and you have an Instagram, 
or YouTube or whatever, um, there are a lot of um, opinions on how you should post regularly, how the posts should look, what you should say, how you should hashtag, what time you should post, whatever. There's a lot of opinions on how to do that. And um, if you can find a way to do it that is like what you would do for yourself, like I was just saying, if you weren't going to share it, for those that are sharing it, can you share it in a way that it's like you're doing it for yourself? Um, which I haven't started doing yet. I haven't been posting on Instagram and stuff. I just needed a break from it so I could kind of reset my mind and focus on the YouTube. But I'm getting ready to start doing it again. Okay, I'm going to comment quickly on the page in front of you. Um, the canoes are, uh, I wanted some shadow to indicate form on his tail because it's closer to the camera and I wanted it to bring it into the foreground, same as earlier when I was making that comment in the first panel. But uh, I have created a tangent. Uh, the canoe, the, uh, the line of like a plank of a seat, the bench on the canoes is like running into where the shadow hits the, the croc tail. And it's like I knew this when I looked at it, but I just left it to do later. And then you'll see later, I'm going to um, regret it. I'm going to have to use whiteout. I'm going to like struggle to like uh, try to fix it without fixing it, without undoing too much of it. And um, it's okay that that happened, but it's nice that I'm aware of it. Like I know that why it happened. Um, so I thought I'd point it out right there. That's why it happened, and you're about to see well, the result, like how it caused me struggle. Um, but yeah, if you can share on Instagram, for example, um, in a way that's for yourself, then uh, maybe it would look like whatever you're doing that day. Um what you write in, 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 this, in the description might be what you want to say in that moment, um, but, it's not, but it might be for a purpose. It's not just like, well, here I am. Uh, here's a piece of art. It might be like, what does this art mean to you? What do you want to remember about this at this moment? And journal that down. Or what thought or idea do you have that you could put in words if, that, if there is words involved in this post? Or, and maybe you should put words to it, and so just for your own journal purposes. But um, maybe, that, maybe there's something to that. Uh, maybe that would result in what I'm experiencing by having this YouTube, this uh, more of a drive and focus to do it. Um, through the um, the consistency and the uh, accountability that you put on yourself and uh, and just being able to reflect and see where you were and where you're going that's motivating um, yeah so so I'm looking to start doing that with uh, Instagram primarily um, and I just, you know, I've been, I've been thinking about that. I think, I think at first I was thinking I would, uh, I would just come up with more of like a, a plan of how, what to post and then just kind of stick to it and schedule them. And I'm like, then I won't have to think about it. Kind of the way I built the website where, uh, it's just like, this is a necessary evil. I'll just get it done. Not think about it. Um, but now, uh, the way I'm thinking of it now, I think is, is going to be much more fulfilling because I mean you have a choice how to go through life you can go through it like uh, it's a, a desert and you are thirsty or you know you're struggling you're um, or you can uh, go through it uh, with some joy and enjoyment um, you'll still suffer but <laughs> but it can be different That's something that's been helpful lately. I've, I've been suffering a lot lately, um, and just in life, and uh, I'm getting better about 
letting myself just feel that and just be in that, uh, those, you know, if it's sadness being in it, um, and letting it, you know, like even my, like my finances aren't where I want them and, uh, my, my, uh, day job isn't where I want it and things like that, that, that I need to like, you know, like I could, part of me is like, Ooh, I need to put, put work into this. I need to worry. I need to grind. I'm in a desert. I need to grind to get where I want to be. No, I don't like, <laughs> no, I, I, I'm learning that how to not do that, that it's okay to, uh, to not jump into action and grind at it and, uh, and worry, um, that I can relax and let it unfold. And that's especially hard when it comes to finance finances. Uh, but yeah, in my position, it's like, well, there, there's no emergency. There's no you know, issue exactly. Like, ultimately it's, it's okay for this month. The next month is, should be okay to you. Like it's okay. Uh, and the steps I need to take with my business or whatever, um, as a therapist, like they are in process. Like I don't need to worry. I don't need to, uh, over, overthink it and overwork it. So, um, yeah, I've got, I've got a lot of life lessons right now along these lines of, uh, to be where you're at and not try to insist on changing it immediately and, um, be present there. I just inked that tail and now it's becoming even more clear. If you couldn't see it before that shadow is just not going to help. It's like right in line with the front edge of the canoe, the angle on that and, and the bench. Um, so I, I, you know, as soon as I did it, I noticed I've got a little issue. So I, I feathered the, the edge, like I added kind of a jagged edge to, to the edge of the shadow. Cause I thought that will give it more of a, uh, less of a harsh line. So it won't look like such, such a tangent, but I knew I couldn't bring the shadow higher up the tail. Cause then it would just black out the tail. It wouldn't be accurate. The sun is above them. I knew I couldn't do that either. So I just feathered the edge. And then, um, I, uh, I don't know if I did it right then or do it later, but I even added like scale lines to the, the, towards the tip of the tail to like draw more attention to it, differentiate it from the canoes more. All of that was attempts to solve a problem that I created by a poorly placed line or shadow block. Um, it happens all the time. And, and the hard part is noticing, like noticing it, like almost subconsciously, I knew I made that mistake. I'm trying to fix it, but I'm not really a, like totally aware of it. I'm just kind of going with what's presented, what's happening. Um, and, and not noticing. And sometimes the right thing is to just go with it. I mean, a lot of times that's the right answer. Uh, for me is to get more in the flow with it. Yeah, here I am adding more detail to the to the tail to try to bring it out. Yeah, here are these lines on the tail, um, which I think I white out later those those last few because they're not necessary if I get the basic shapes right in the first place. So, uh, so I end up fixing it later, but. But in the future, uh, if I can notice that, um, one way that that helps is if when I'm drawing, a, uh, or one way to help with that is if I'm drawing a page and I'm like listening to something or I'm distracted, I might not notice that's what's happening. I'm just kind of rolling with it. Um, but if I can focus more and be more present with what I'm doing, then I'm going to notice what's happening around me, which is a life lesson. It's good to be that way in your life, but it's also what you have to be able to do when, when you work on the page. Um, and, uh, I know that sounds like not having, you know, that what you would need to do is not have ADHD, for example. Um, I probably 
could have been diagnosed with that. Maybe still. Um, anyone that has lived with me knows uh, how uh, all over the place I can be and forgetful. But um, but I'm getting better at about that. I'm getting a lot better at being present and paying attention. Not you know not forgetting things. Because I'm not because because a lot of the problem was I was out of stress and uh, uh, a, a lack mindset, uh, always trying to do a hundred things at once and not just do a hundred things like work hard, but like while I'm doing something, I need to be doing something else or I need to be thinking about the other things I could do instead of just kind of doing the thing. So like you, you know, I was training myself to be even more uh, attention deficit, you could say. So, um, I'm working on that. I'm getting better about, about that. Yeah. Here, uh, getting, I'm, I'm carefully putting in some shadows on the guy that's laying down because he's so close to the ground and the, it, you know, the sun's right above us. So there's, it's really hard to show a shadow on him, any shadows with how he's laying so flat. So I'm just using the brush, just like throwing in a few to just give a little weight underneath him, a little separation from the raft so that he's more clear in that spot. Um, and that was without using the ink pen to get the line. Sometimes I just use the brush to do that. And we are already on to the whiteout phase. Uh, not, yeah, here I, um, that black box, I just completely whited out that was on swords back. That was actually her, um, uh, quiver. I chose to just eliminate that. It, it was, it was looking almost like a black chunk on like a shadow on his back and it just didn't clarify. So I just removed it. Um, these are just very minor cleanups that I was doing. They were not super necessary, really. So there, I, I just put in the line of the quiver, but I didn't want the whole thing in black and shadow because that just made it seem even more confusing where it was located. So, um, Yeah, you'll see I've already started putting white out on that tail, but that chunk of black there that's closest to the canoe on the right, it is still like a tangent there. And I just tried to adjust it some more. I, what I needed to do was just get rid of it, which I finally do. But yeah, see, I finally move the shadow down so that it's not in the, uh, in the canoe, like, a like running as a tangent with the canoe. Uh, the ink was still a little wet or, or most likely, or sometimes the paint isn't coming on very thick. So it left it kind of gray. So I have to go back at it maybe in a, in a 30 seconds, a minute, a few minutes and, uh, reapply. And that's what I'm doing here. When I go back through, I'm just, uh, that last time I was reapplying white to the spots that were still looking a little gray. There's the final page. Uh, got a different font for King Croc when he speaks because it's just inhuman sounding. So, and a different bubble uh, effect. Uh, and that's the first time I've done that in this comment. Comic had the word balloon wrap around the letters, uh, but when I used just an ellipse sort of balloon it was it, it didn't look so great because the word I wanted I wanted big letters there and there's a son's last cry out before he plunges into the water and that is it for this week thank you for watching and listening and uh, hope things are going well in your process and your practice uh, I'm happy to get emails or, or messages or comments uh, if you are wherever you are at and whatever you're doing with your practice, uh, share it with me and I'll try to take the time to take a look and, um, 
and, and chat a little bit. Okay, see you next week.